Next, we'll talk about uh, phototherapy of uh, psoriasis, which is an important modality of treatment in psoriasis. We have uh, both UVA and UVB therapy, that is ultraviolet radiation A and B therapy. Using both of that, we can uh, do phototherapy in psoriasis. Firstly, coming to the ultraviolet B phototherapy, in UVB radiation, we have both uh, we have broadband as well as narrowband uh, radiations in this, but uh, normally we use nor narrowband uh, spectrum which is around 311 plus or minus uh, 2 nanometer it is this spectrum that we use for treating patients uh, which is more effective than the broadband broadband would be 300 to 320 nanometers so this using phototherapy will give a long term remission it causes less burning less carcinogenicity also so this uvb radiation is advantageous here mechanism of action of this phototherapy would be it will deplete the t cells which are seen in the epidermis and there will be conversion from th1 to th2 cytokine profile so psoriasis happens because this is inflammatory response by T cells. So that would be depleted by the phototherapy which again is a one of the pathogenesis would be reduced here and also in psoriasis we see this TH1 cytokine profile which is seen. So that would be shifted by phototherapy due to TH2 cytokine profile which will help in reducing the inflammatory response and the symptoms of psoriasis. Psoriatic plaques should be rubbed with petrolatum before giving phototherapy okay and then you should give UVB phototherapy. The dose is uh, based upon the minimal erythema dose. So you have to check how, how, how well the patient can tolerate your dose and then 80% of whatever minimal erythema dose you get then you have to start the treatment minimal erythema doses you have to give series of uh, um, exposure uh, frequencies to the patient and see how much uh, erythema or blistering or whatever uh, reactions the patient develops so faint erythema is what we need so patient should develop a faint erythema as the end point of this so that would be minimal erythema dose 80% of that dose you, you start the patient on okay after that if the patient is improving and has no side effects then you can increase it by 20% at each exposure if there is no erythema which is seen. That's how you start the treatment for psoriasis. It is given 3 times a week. So on alternate days, 3 times per week you give and that has to be continued for 20 to 30 sittings. So if the patient has improved, then you can go for once weekly setting for long term involvement, long term remission. Okay, And uh, it is said that 90% of the lesions will clear in 80% of the patients. So it is so effective. And uh, here you don't give any photosensitizers or sorolins to the patient. So side effects of that is avoided. Only for Therapy is given okay and indication for phototherapy in psoriasis would be you give it in stable uh, psoriasis and also in gutted psoriasis that it is that dew drop like lesions erythematous papules which you see in psoriasis after a streptococcal infection that is get it psoriasis stable psoriasis is it is not progressed in the last one year it is stable the plaques are stable and in that psoriasis we give and the body surface area involvement should be more than 20 percent so more than 20 percent body surface area involvement also is another prerequisite the thick lesions which are present on the elbows, knees, palms and soles, they do not respond so well. So they respond very poorly to phototherapy. Uh, we can combine phototherapy with cold tar or acid retin. So oral acid retin or with cold tar topical, we can combine the phototherapy. Okay. So where do we not give phototherapy? We avoid it in patients uh, who have photosensitivity because again, it will increase the photosensitivity disorders. In patients who have photodermatosis like polymorphic light eruption or solar urticaria or actinic prurag, if the patient has any of the photo dermatosis we avoid this if the patient is on any other phototoxic medication we don't give this if the patient has unstable psoriasis pustular psoriasis erythrodomic psoriasis and history of skin cancer so these are the uh, cases where you don't give phototherapy or uh, uv phototherapy in particular okay Next uh, treatment in phototherapy would be eczema laser. Here we use a laser. What do we do here is we give supra arrhythmogenic doses uh, of UEB which will result in quicker healing of the lesions. So increased dosage, not 80% of the MED. So increased dosage we give here which will help in clearing of the lesions. We use a laser light here that is 308 nanometer eczema laser light is used which will emit a very monochromatic and a coherent beam of light which, is, which will target only that particular lesion it will not go everywhere else. So it delivers higher fluencies to the lesion and it will spare the surrounding skin so you don't have to worry about surrounding skin side effects so it can be given twice a weekly for six weeks uh, again here it can be used in stable psoriasis and recalcitrant psoriasis even on the elbows and knees which is present you can use this eczema laser the third thing here is photo chemotherapy here you can the word itself tells you that photo is you're using light and chemo is you're using some drug so for light along with some drug you're using it's a combination therapy so the drugs that you use are called as furocomerins so these are furocomerins or otherwise called as solarins they are photosensitizers basically along with that we use long wave ultraviolet radiation which is usually uva therapy here okay uva therapy that's why it's called pua therapy which is solarin uva 
uh, ultraviolet radiation a therapy okay so sorolens are naturally occurring compounds they are activated by light here we have eight methoxy sorolen four five eight trimethoxy sorolen and five methoxy sorolen these two are uh, um, natural whereas this uh, four five eight trimethyl sorolen is synthetic sorolen okay we can use this for uh, treating the patients it is used in extensive plaque psoriasis and in those who are intolerant to methotrexate so it can be used in moderate to severe psoriasis and patients who are above 50 years of age we can use you cannot use it in these are the contraindications you cannot use it in less than 18 years pregnant females severe renal disease hepatic disease cardiovascular disease premature cataract if the patient has and multiple melanocytic nevi and other photosensitivity disorders you should not use uva phototherapy so comparatively when you see the contraindications you you will know now that uh, uvb therapy is uh, better than uva therapy it can be uvb can be given in uh, less than 18 years in pregnant and lactating females also it can be given uh, here we uh, normally when you're using 8 methoxy solarin they give 0.6 mg per kg of this uh, 8 methoxy solarin and that is given on alternate days so on alternate days we give this oral tablet after the patient has taken it in the morning after two hours he can expose to the sunlight you can either natural sunlight he can expose or you can go to the chambers artificial chambers which is there the dose would be 0.5 to 1.5 joule per centimeter square starting you also have gelatin capsules of the liquid or not only oral tablets you also have liquid formulations which are there okay modification would be uh, we can uh, go for poor baths soaks or paints which are available um, combination therapy uh, with PUA, you can uh, give methotrexate. You can also give UVB therapy. There's an entity called as RePUA, wherein retinoids, that is oral acetretin, is combined with PUA therapy. Okay, so acetretin they'll take it orally, which is a retinoid, and then they combine it with PUA therapy. That's why it's called as RePUA. Topical steroids with PUA can be combined. Topical urea, coal tar, diethanol, salicylic acid can be combined. The side effects of PUA include there are immediate and late side effects. Immediate side effects would be uh, nausea, vomiting, headache, vertigo, erythema, pruritus, blistering other sites then cobner's phenomenon uh, that is uh, similar lesions occur elsewhere also on the deceased uh, patient and hyperpigmentation hypertrichosis can be present actinic keratosis lichenoid eruptions can be seen the long-term side effects would be the patients can have melanoma non-melanoma skin cancers corneal opacification poor lentigenes and photonicolysis also okay so so the side effects have to be kept in mind when you start a patient on poor therapy we have photodynamic therapy also here we again you come by a photosensitizing drug with light light sensitive agent is porphyrin here is used okay so porphyrins in the form of we have uh, uh, photophorin benzoporphyrin and vertiporphin which can be used porphyrins what they do is here they will absorb the energy from the photons and they will transfer the photons are from the light so they'll absorb energy from them and they'll transfer it to the surrounding oxygen molecules to form toxic oxygen species and these toxic oxygen species will damage the cell structure which is damaged already okay and they'll do that particular function and uh, that's how we use these uh, drugs here so topical photodynamic therapy also is available with topical fire minus salicylic acid which has been tried the light source here we use is an led light or a laser light we use as the light source so as the light source falls the porphyrins will uh, absorb photons uh, from uh, absorb energy from the photons and they'll transfer it to the surrounding oxygen molecules which will form free radicals and destroy the cell uh, side effects would be sensation of warmth stinging ache in the psoriatic lesions can be the side effects there's another uh, treatment called as hyperthermia and sea bathing uh, sea bathing is also called as balneotherapy so here ultrasound induced uh, heat is used as a treatment modality argon lasers carbon dioxide lasers are also used as a heat source Climatotherapy or this balneotherapy here is a treatment strategy wherein uh, um, in sea bathing here the patient is given a highly concentrated salt water bath in dead sea and then it is followed by UV exposure. So he'll take a highly concentrated salt bath he'll take and after that uh, he is exposed to UV radiation. Uh, so this was followed in European countries. Uh, wherein dead, dead sea wherever dead sea is there he's it was followed there and uh, that's why it's called as dead sea therapy or sea bathing or balneotherapy or climatotherapy it's called okay that is said to reduce the number of psoriatic lesions uh nextly we have combination therapy in combination therapy we have three types like combination sequential and rotational therapy in combination therapy two therapeutic agents are uh, used simultaneously in smaller doses to obtain better results of both of that and to reduce the toxicities as well so one would be an accelerator and another would be a maintainer that we use so two drugs simultaneously we use the accelerator would be cyclosporin or uvb phototherapy or the methotrexate 
and the maintainer would be pua therapy or acid treatment the one which acts very uh, fast and which acts very well is given as accelerator therapy whereas maintainer therapy would be for long term treatment long term remission okay so a dose of accelerator is tapered after disease is controlled and then maintainer is continued indications for this would be if there is a failure of monotherapy you can try this and if there is toxicity of either drug you can combine one another to reduce the toxicity as well as to increase the efficacy so here you can see the combination therapies we have pua which is combined with topical steroids methotrexate with topical steroids retinoids with topical steroids uvb with topical steroids cyclosporine with topical steroids so topical steroids can be combined with all of these then uh, pua with topical calcipotriol uvb with topical tazarotin systemic agents also can be tried as combination therapies like pua with retinoid uvb with retinoid pua with uvb pua with cyclosporine and others these are the other examples again rotational therapy is uh, therapeutic agents are rotated at regular intervals that is after a gap of 1 or 2 years they are rotated to prevent cumulative toxicity of so for example if you are using methotrexate for a long time if you exceed a cumulative to cumulative dose of 1.5 grams you can't continue using methotrexate right and if the patient has comorbidities it is 1.5 grams otherwise it is 3 to 4 grams which is the maximum that you can use in a patient so if, to um, prevent this uh, uh, attainment of this cumulative dose you give sequential uh, rotational therapy sorry okay so you rotate one after the other it reduces toxicity and also will decrease the drug resistance so you can start the patient on methotrexate then switch over to pua when you get the control of the disease or you start methotrexate then you start change it to cyclosporine cyclosporine has got renal side effects methotrexate has got hepatic side effects so when you see that this, this can cause met, uh, hepatic side effects then switch over to cyclosporine so methotrexate and retinoids also can be switched over like that sequential therapies drugs are used in a deliberate sequence here you move from one therapy to another therapy with overlap okay you have three phases here that is clearing phase or quick phase transitional phase and maintenance phase for example in the first phase you combine topical clobetazole with calcipotrol which is high potency very efficacious this along with that you can supplement uh, when the disease control is seen then you go for the next phase which is the transition phase wherein you give topical clobetazole on weekends only and calcipotrol continued on weekdays after the resolution is obtained then go for the maintenance phase wherein only calcipotrol you can continue for a long time okay so this would be a sequential therapy also you can do this with uh, cyclosporine and uh, acetretin you combine cyclosporine plus acetretin you can give cyclosporine will help in immediate control of the disease then you stop cyclosporine and give acetretin only and then continue acetretin like that you can do you can combine it with pua therapy also when you get remission other forms of therapy are uh, you have to treat the psychological factors because it's again a disfiguring not disfiguring but the lesions are seen evidently on the skin and that would be very troublesome to the patient also so psychological counseling needs to be done surgical treatments of large plaques if it is present then debridement um, uh, the uh, curettage of the plaques electro desiccation can be done diet and psoriasis would include um, you have to take uh, gluten free diet it said that it is uh, reduce the incidence of psoriasis and also omega 3 fatty acids can be included in the diet these are the treatment modalities of psoriasis